Hello, welcome back to mathswithdavid.com. I'm David Swanson and today we're going to look together at a complex numbers question from the Pure Mathematics 3, that's the P3 paper on the Cambridge International A-Levels. We'll start as normal by reading through the question. A. It is given that minus 1 plus root 5i is a root of the equation z cubed plus 2z plus a equals 0, where a is real. Showing you're working, find the value of a and write down the other complex root of this equation. B. The complex number w has modulus 1 and argument 2 theta radians. Show that w minus 1 over w plus 1 equals i tan theta. So for part a, there's several ways to do this, but we're simply going to substitute our root into the equation and expand everything and find out what's left is being equal to a. So if we start out by writing our equation and everywhere we see z, we're going to replace it with minus 1 plus root 5i. So we'll write minus 1 plus root 5i cubed plus 2 times minus 1 plus root 5a plus a equals 0. Now we could, with a cubic, use uh, our FOIL approach and deal with it as a quadratic first, expanding the brackets, and then multiply that by another brackets. However, by this stage in the game, we're already familiar with the binomial theorem, and it's going to be much quicker, much more useful, if we get used to expanding brackets using our binomial theorem, which we should remember where we have decreasing powers of one term and increasing powers of the other term, and we have the coefficients selected from the Pascal triangle. So as this is a cubic, our coefficients are going to be 1, 3, 3, and 1. So to expand this specific cubic, we're going to have minus 1 cubed plus 3 times by minus 1 squared times by root 5i plus 3 times by minus 1 times by root 5i squared plus root 5i cubed, minus, and then we could expand this second bracket, minus 2 plus 2 root 5i plus a equals 0. And then we just need to go through each term, being very careful with our i's to remember that i squared equals minus 1. So minus 1 cubed gives us minus 1. 3 times minus 1 squared times by root 5i, minus 1 squared is 1, so that has no effect. So it's just 3 root 5i. 3 times by minus 1 times by root 5i all squared. Well, our i squared gives us a minus 1, which combines with our other minus 1 to cancel out. So we've got the root 5 squared, which is 5, times by 3, so we've got 15. Plus root 5i cubed, well, i cubed is minus i, so this is, and root 5 cubed is 5 root 5, so this is minus 5 root 5i minus 2 plus 2 I root 5 i plus a equals 0. Now if we look carefully at the left hand side we can see we've got a plus 3 root 5 i, a minus 5 root 5 i, and a plus 2 root 5 i. Now they all cancel out, so all our imaginary terms cancel out, and we're left with minus 1 plus 15 minus 2, which is 12, plus a equals 0. So straightforwardly we can see a is minus 12. Then there was a last bit to the question, which asked us for the other imaginary root. Well, if minus 1 plus root 5i is a root, then the conjugate minus 1 minus root 5i is also a root. So now to part b. On part b, again, there's several ways that we could approach this. We're given the modulus and the argument, so we're going to be dealing with the polar form somehow. Now, there's two ways we can deal with it. We can look at putting this in trigonometric form straight away, as we can see our answer has tan theta, or we can use exponential form first. I'm going to use the exponential form first, as that's the simpler solution. Either way, you would get the marks. So, start off, we've got a radius of 1. Uh, sorry, we've got, a, um, we've got an r of 1, a modulus of 1, and we've got an argument of 2 theta. So, if we put that in exponential form, it's 1 times by e to the 2i theta, or simply e to the 2i theta. So we want w minus 1 over w plus 1. So that's e to the 2 theta minus 1 over e to the 2i theta plus 1. 
Now we've got a nice method here to avoid us having numbers and um, exponential forms mixed together uh, and to make things simple for when we transfer to trigonometric form. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide the top and bottom of our fraction by e to the i theta. What does that do? Well, it makes our term on the top left, e to the 2i theta divided by e to the i theta is e to the i theta, minus 1 divided by e to the i theta is e to the minus i theta. So on the top, we've got e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta. And similarly, on the bottom, we've got e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. Now, it's much easier to transfer to trigonometric form now because we don't have our, our two thetas, we've just got theta. Like I said, we could have gone straight away to trigonometric and used our double angle formula, but this is the easiest way to do it. So our e to the i theta becomes cos theta plus i sine theta in trigonometric form, and we're subtracting cos of minus theta plus i sine of minus theta. And on the bottom, we've got cos of theta plus i sine theta plus cos of minus theta plus i sine minus theta. Now, to get rid of our minus thetas, we can use the fact that cosine function is even and the sine function is odd. So our, all of our cosine minus thetas become cosine theta, and all of our sine minus thetas become minus sine theta. So we can rewrite that as cos theta plus i sine theta minus cos theta plus i sine theta, being careful with the minus there because we've got a minus outside the bracket, is uh, over cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos theta minus i sine theta. Then if we look carefully on the top, the cosine thetas cancel out, and on the bottom, the i sine thetas cancel out. And that just leaves us with 2 i sine theta over 2 cos theta. The 2s cancel out, and we're left with i sine theta over cos theta, or i tan theta. So let's look at where the marks are assigned. On the first question, we get one method mark for expanding out the qubit fully. Um, so it doesn't have to be accurate, but we do have to expand it out. And then we get a second mark if at some point in our working we've used the fact that i squared equals minus 1. The examiner just needs to see that at some point in the working. We've then got two accuracy marks, one for getting a equals minus 12, and then a straightforward one at the end for saying that the, uh, the other imaginary root is minus 1 minus root 5i. The marking in the second part, we get one accuracy mark for rewriting w as e to the 2i theta in our fraction, or if we go on the trigonometric route, we get it for putting it correctly in the trigonometric form, cos theta plus i sine theta. We get a second mark on the route that we've gone by dividing through by e to the i theta. And then we get a third mark for switching into the trigonometric form correctly. That's an accuracy mark, so we have to have the numbers, the, 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 every term exactly correct on that one. And then we get a further accuracy mark for getting something equal to i tan theta, in our case 2i sine theta over 2 cosine theta. So I hope that uh, worked exam question has been useful. There's plenty more on the site, www.mathswithdavid.com. And I'll put a link at the end to a playlist which has only complex numbers questions from the uh, Pure Maths 3 paper. As always, if you have any comments or recommendations, please put them below, whether you're watching on the YouTube page or on the site. Either way, I'll be able to see them and I'll respond as quickly as possible. And uh, we'll also put the link at the end to subscribe to the channel if you want to be updated with further videos. Thanks for your attention. See you next time.